Hi guys, I'm Shmi and today I'm in Sweden in Angleholm at the home of Koenigsegg, the legendary hypercar mega car manufacturer. And we're going to be able today to take a look around inside the factory. Now, of course, with customer cars being built, there are certain things I can't point the camera at, but what we are going to be able to do is see some pretty special stuff behind the scenes before tomorrow, I'm going to be able to go out in the Regera, their new amazing hybrid mega car. It's a truly special machine and I'm very much looking forward to that. But first up, we're going to be heading into the factory itself. And this is a pretty awesome place. Straight into the showroom where we are greeted with three cars, the CCR here, the CCR Revo, which you might remember way back when I was fortunate enough to drive this car with Super Vachira, the UK dealership from the UK over here to the factory in Sweden, which was a pretty special experience. And here we've got a CCXR edition, one of the limited run cars as well. So that is very nice. But let's head in and take a look in the factory. To take a look around today, I'm going to be joined by none other than Mr. Von Koenigsegg himself. Thank you very much for having me along again today. Well, great to have you here, Tim. Uh, good to see you yeah. again. It's, well, it's been a while since I was last here and it looks like things have changed. I can see the production line is sort of grown and the whole factory has grown to quite a big degree. Yeah, we're, we are trying to make uh, use of our space best possible. It's getting uh, yeah, a little bit tighter space, but we're making more mezzanine floors and, and yes. adding buildings and things like that. So uh, yeah, we're growing basically. And, and gearing everything up, I guess, for the introduction of the new car on the That's production correct. line. Yeah, so this year will be the first year in Koenigsegg history where we have uh, two cars, two car models on the production line at the same time. So it's very exciting for us. So it's been a uh, preparation process for that uh, by increasing the staff and training the staff and uh, yeah I gather the numbers have grown quite significantly how many more people yeah. are, are now employed here so we're just over 100 uh, okay so it's grown a little bit yeah yeah absolutely I sort of think it was only 70 or so not that long ago uh, a few months ago yeah exactly. Oh, amazing so amazing it's, it's going forward definitely yeah, so it's preparing to sort of cope for the demand I suppose with the orders for the new cars right right yes it's, uh, it's been uh, well received and uh, uh, we're just uh, sold out of the RS. So yeah, so the, the cars we're looking at here, the Agera RS. Yes. Um, the car that you introduced at the Geneva Motor Show last Correct. year. Correct. Correct. Um, all sold out. How, how many are there? They're all sold out. Well, 25 customer cars, and then okay. we have our own like testing car, like on the one-to-one. -one okay, well, congratulations. Brilliant. That's a, a very good start. So this is this is where it all begins. This is stage one. Well, not yeah, really stage one. This, this is where stage one on the assembly line. Correct. You can call it that. Yeah. It's stage one on the assembly line. So this is where we start to assemble. Here, basically, we don't uh, build parts for the car, it's assembling. So, in the other hangar next door is where we're creating the carbon fiber pieces. Uh, we're doing the painting and polishing and cutting and grinding and so on. And here is assembly, but we also, on this side here, we make uh, wiring harnesses. And on the other side, which we'll see later, we do the upholstery work. Mm -hmm. um, and then they come more and more together. Uh, this is the similar process we've been using for over quite a few years. Uh, here we install the engine which is being built uh, 20 meters back there in that room um, and it comes in here and we also start up the car on this station for the first time and make okay, sure so it gets uh, started right here yeah I mean the engine is run first in the engine dyno and then it's run here so I this is where the car comes alive be one actually of before the body works is even fitted to the car so I think one of my favorite things, and this is something a lot of people will never see, yeah. is how beautiful all of the components are, even the ones that you don't end up seeing. Right, right. Like, these parts here, I know that that's completely hidden on it's the final car, isn't it? It's pretty much hidden, yeah, exactly. But yet you still make it a sort of perfectly weave-matched design right. piece with your logo embossed on the... Right, right. Yeah, side. I mean, there is... Uh, the philosophy since the get-go of Koenigsegg has always been there is no behind or backside of things. If you open it up, it should be as nice on the inside as on the outside. It's a little bit like a Fabergé egg in a sense, so a Koenigsegg okay, yeah. or a Fabergé egg. <laughs> yeah, I Similar see the reference, thing. I see where you're going at. I always refer to your, your little babies as eggs. They are very nice eggs. And, and if, you, uh, if, if you have that philosophy, you don't need to focus on, oh, we need to show this, we need to make this look nice, because we try to make everything look nice, regardless if it's seen or not. So if someone takes the car apart in uh, 50 years' time in a museum or something, they will say, wow, that was also nice underneath. It's a really properly yes. made car. Yeah. I mean, so these there's a value to that. Parts in the center, the manifolds, the way the carbon sort of weave right. comes to the V-shape in the center is all very, very beautiful. Yeah. And, and uh, we have this quite unique treatment to the carbon fiber. 
uh, which we do to a lot of parts now. Th this is straight out of the tool just polished, while this is, which we have on, on a lot of the whistle parts on the 1 to 1 and the RS, is, is actually wet sanded carbon fiber where we sand down to the actual raw fiber structure mm -hmm. and you get, you get uh, a stronger surface and a more metallic look, which is unique yes. to Koenigsegg. Yeah, you can certainly see that. And, and it's very lightweight as well. Uh, so yeah. we, we actually remove rather than add anything to the part. Okay. You can start to see quite a bit of it coming together. Right. Everything right. getting measured and lined up. Yes, that's it. So yeah, we can see our uh, Koenigsegg brakes. Uh, so on the uh, on the RS model, we have this new uh, um, carrier for the disc, which is the first in the world, as far as I'm aware, which is unique for each corner of the car. And the advantage of that is uh, we can optimize the material uh, on the side where we have the braking force. Normally they are symmetrical, which okay. are, is fine. Then you can use them on left and right hand side on the car, in the mm -hmm. front and rear. Maybe you have a bit different depth on the bell. But here we have uh, taken the decision to save a few grams by optimizing them for, the, for each corner. Right. So uh, when you brake here, you hold here, the disc goes that way, most of the force is in that direction, so that's where you have the bulk of the material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Also on the other side, if you see in here, you can see there's a little bit like a wing profile on the inside of the carrier to bring air out to cool the outside of the disc. You can see how it changes thickness throughout here, that's completely unique. It's just yeah. a little detail. But well, that's a sort of a, a prime example of the entire car, the sort of right. level of engineering sort of focus you place right, on it. Right, right. And the same thing with the uh, with the brake calipers. I, I mean, we, we design and, and build them in-house. As you can see, it says a little bit like Apple, you know, it says uh, designed in Cupertino, made in China, but we said designed and made in Engelholm. <laughs> by, Very nice. by Koenigsegg. By Koenigsegg, yeah. and, and what's unique about them as well is that they're also uniquely made for each corner of the car. They're, every part is asymmetrical for the purpose of, the, of its position. So you can't turn this upside down and move the tube around here and put it on the other side, yeah. because that would add weight, because we would need material for okay. things we don't need on this side. Yeah, very clever. And, and that's okay. what you would get with your, your standard like AP or Brembo brakes. They would be the same and then you have to move the tube around. So we optimize everything for each corner of the car to be as light, as strong and, and, and good as possible. And of course, uh, the brakes have proved themselves. We have the world record in stopping from 300 yes, kilometers per hour to zero. So they're really massive and working well. Very unique. Uh, uh, piece of glass. Uh, we, all, we, we, we many times get the question at car shows from car designers and other car manufacturers, how do you make that screen? Is that possible? Yeah. It's so curved and they've heard it can't be done. And, yeah. and in, in a sense, maybe they are right because in production of the screens, we do select the good ones. It's okay, like, yeah. like of a batch of five, maybe three we use. Okay, right. Because it is like hand-blown glass in a sense. It's a yeah. frame they melt down into and the deep curvature makes that more tricky. And every little temperature change affects the optics of the glass. So of course in mass production you wouldn't want to have like 30% uh, loss of... Uh, <laughs> no, of course, of course. Part. It's but one of the advantages of creating uh, bespoke vehicles That's and, a lim it. and a limited uh, sort of number of them, I suppose. Yeah. So, I mean, what is the sort of total production capacity at the moment? What are you right. sort of so looking at getting now, to? Now we are at the rate of uh, a three-week production cycle, almost. We've gone from four weeks to three weeks. Okay. And uh, by the end of the year, meaning, let's say, from between 2016 and 2017, mm -hmm. we're aiming for a two-week cycle. Okay. That's the aim. Exciting, we'll see how exciting increase in cars. Yeah. Well, I guess with the orders for Regera coming through. Yeah, yeah. We have a pretty uh, big backlog we're trying to chew off. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're noticing, of course, that uh, when, when the lead times get long, it's uh, yeah a little bit more resistance in the market if you have to wait like three, but four it's, years. So. It's exciting that your the, the customers are there and coming and coming forward to, to buy the cars. Oh, yes. It's, uh, it's certainly nice. the new car. I'm looking forward to seeing and learning more about the new car. Yeah, yeah. You will, you will know a little bit more before you leave. Yeah. Tomorrow, very, very excited. So can we take a quick look further down? The car's coming sort of almost to complete shape. Together, here they are working on things that shouldn't be closed, so we always make sure that's clear to everyone, that they don't touch it yeah. if they shouldn't. And a very classic, uh, sporty color scheme on this car, I would say. One of my preferred ones, very yes. striking. 
simple but striking. And here you can see the different treatments to the carbon. We always make sure when we have these different uh, layers of color that you can't feel it. It's all okay. layered in and, and, and uh, uh, evened out by clear coat. It takes a lot of more effort than if you f you can sense the different layers, but yeah. it makes more of a quality product. Again, here you have the raw polished carbon, uh, which which you can see quite a distinctive difference to uh, the clear coated carbon. This is also Completely. raw polished carbon. The wheels are also. Ooh, well, yes, hopefully, hopefully we can find a wheel. They're pretty special. Right, <laughs> yes, I'm sure we will. Sure will. Uh, Coming around towards so the end, so long-term plan is that the Regeras and the Agera RSs will be built in sync together on this line? Yes, they will. There will be an overlap uh, where we have both cars on the line. Uh, the Regera will come online when we only have a few RSs left to build. Okay. So there will be a, a, an overlap there and uh, then, yeah, we will see what we come up with to replace the RS eventually. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> it will be a few years out and we will be there. It will be something very special, I'm no doubt. If we uh, continue round, we have a rather beautiful colour in my mind on this car. Yeah, this is quite, quite exciting. This is also interesting, you can see this car is soon getting ready for test drive. It's started up quite recently, yes, the car. You can see we, we tape up the whole bodywork as we drive the cars in poor weather and so on. And you can see it's not like beautifully taped, it's taped with overlaps and so on, so it's easy to... Oh, so this is already them. taped? Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not for the customer, it's only for test drive. Yeah, yeah. So we do a full body... Uh, uh, a protection film. Protection film for test driving that we then remove when we're done and then we polish the whole car. Okay, and we yeah. test drive with our own wheels. Many times you see pictures of Koenigseggs driving around with weird yes, sets I mean, of wheels. I noticed, like one. I noticed yeah. that immediately here. These are not the final wheels. Exactly. It's all of the, uh, the new models. You have your carbon fiber wheels. Exactly. So sometimes they're winter tires this time of, of year. But it's sometimes, a legal requirement here, right? It's yes. Like winter and sweet. Exactly. These are not winter tires in this one, but, but uh, these are our test driving wheels that we have and shift around on the cars we test drive. And okay. uh, like on this car, the seats are still being uh, finished up over here. But then we have like just a standard set of seats in it. Okay. Uh, and that also means, of course, there's no wear and tear on the... Yeah, so they're the completely seat. perfect. So this is the almost final stage? This is very, very late in the stage. This is uh, uh, station eight, where it will start test driving soon. Okay. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. So we can see the seats for this car down here where we have our upholstery shop. So we recently expanded this area. We are now three uh, upholsterers working here and uh, can really customize uh, for the okay. for the client. So this is quite unusual, but I guess it goes with the outside of the yes, car. Yes, completely. Very and unusual gold, color Golden choices. leather. This is the same supplier of leather as we hear Rolls Royce is using. Okay. It's called Heva from Germany, but we really use all suppliers and adapt them to each customer's uh, wishes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we the beautiful use, carbon backs as well. Yeah, we use memory foam. Uh, we cut the foam by hand if they want to have thicker or thinner, uh, depending on their physique. So... Uh, yeah. We've got some good noises in the background. Right. <laughs> right. This is the uh, raw structure of the seat. And uh, what's quite unique about it, it's very, very lightweight. The carbon fiber piece is only 1.8 kilos. 1.8 kilos for the carbon fiber piece of the seat? Yes. That is the not very much. It's not very much. <laughs> and the way we could do that, I mean, then you have the rails underneath, which add a little bit as you yeah. can slide the seat backwards and forwards. But the way we could keep it light is we believe we made probably the world's first monocoque carbon fiber seat because we bombed in these these layers and there's actually air between here and the outside so it's like a it's okay. like a monocoque shape it's a hollow structure here okay so we can add stiffness without adding material mm -hmm. in the right place and at the same time it's pre-shaping the foam uh, to the right shape here we have a, a mount for the uh, uh, small um, a fire extinguisher which is both on the left and right side of, of the car uh, yeah. so they're hidden tucked in underneath and here we have something unique, which is the mounting for the six-point uh, uh, belt harness. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's quite unique to have that with the seats and going backwards and forwards. Mm -hmm. okay. And on the latest ones, we've even integrated it so you can uh, fold down the, uh, the uh, uh, buckle into the foam so it's not in the way when you're sitting on it if you're using okay. the three-point harness. Okay, okay. 
Very clever. It's a little bit unique. So I, I noticed as we were walking around something exciting um, just through the, uh, the other side. We were able right, to take right. a quick look. So th this room over here used to be our uh, factory showroom. Now we have one up in the office area. And we converted this into a prototype room where we're uh, going to build our prototypes. The Regera prototype room was uh, smaller and now we're making this into the prototype room for the Regeras. So we have two lifts and two uh, spaces here for cars and good lighting and easy access out. And, and this car here is uh, being prepared uh, as a completely built car, uh, being going to be smashed in into a crash barrier. Which is not something you enjoy doing, but it is very good for the business. Yes, it's something we have to do. I mean, we have the same, uh, we have to comply with the same rules as the large car manufacturers uh, and, and do that. Of course, it's not painted. Uh, the engine doesn't need to be fully functioning. Uh, there is not nice new leather in the car. There are a few simplifications like that, but structurally and functionally, on a broad scale, it's a, it's a real car. All for homologation and for US approval. Because Regera, Regera will be going to the US from, from new? Uh, yes, yes. Let's see if we can open up here, you can see a little bit of a drive okay. train as well. Uh, with the direct drive unit. You can see yeah. how short it is. The wheels I, are actually... We'll remove this. Maybe I can put this like such. No, I'll do that. Um, and you can see, yeah, how short the overhead yeah, the, basically the, is. The furthest back part is the tire. Yeah, and, and in this car, for the first time, uh, the engine and gear, or there's no gearbox, the engine and the transmission are not load-carrying members. They are um, uh, mounted on active uh, rubber mounts, so we okay. have less of the engine sounds going into the car. You still hear the, okay. the rumble of the engine, but less of the mechanics. Okay, okay, I'm with you. So, uh, it goes hand in hand with a little bit more GT-esque character of the Regera. Okay. So, I'll take that. Got it? Yeah. I'm looking forward to uh, learning a lot more about this car itself tomorrow. Of course. <laughs> this you can see. <laughs> and uh, that will be all hydraulically connected for the impact as well. Awesome. Well, it will be sad the way the car has to go, but it'll be very exciting that it will ultimately mean we'll see more of them, especially right. around the USA as well. Exactly. Which is a very big thing. So, yeah, here we're making pre-production wheels uh, for the Regera. We're learning the ropes, how to build them really quickly. We've well, gone with a very uh, intricate This is straight design. out of the tool, so it's some, uh, some uh, what do you call it, uh, flashy flash cutaway and yeah. stuff like that. The thing I immediately notice and I love about this design is how all of the carbon fiber weave points to the inside. Right, right. All the spokes and all the way around the outside as well. Yeah, you try, we try to spread it around like a... And it weighs next to nothing, right? Oh yeah, you can feel it yourself. <laughs> Just watch out so you don't cut on the short how, how much does this weigh? Uh, I think that the rear, the front is uh, six and a half and the rear is about seven and a half kilos. That's not a lot. Not, no, not for the size <laughs> of it. So. So, it's that's... quite special. And this is, these are also hollow spoke wheels. Yes, okay. Because all, I'm right now, the Regera RS and the Regera, all of your cars are now carbon wheels. That's it, wheels. that's it. Uh, on the Regera, we're uh, making the carbon wheel optional because we okay. notice a lot of the customers are looking for shiny wheels as well. Okay, Depending yeah, so on their color create, schemes. Keep the option available. Again, a little bit more the GT-esque flavor. Okay, so yeah. you, you can have these, but you can also have a, a nice new aluminium wheel, which you can have either black or any other color, but also yeah. polished. Okay. So, this is basically where the carbon fiber process starts, where we have programmed this machine to cut out the pre-preg according to the templates, dig digital templates, and then we're by hand putting into the tools for baking in the autoclave. Yeah, and it was, so. starts out in the freezer, right? Yeah, you have some, <laughs> we have a couple of freezers. This is the the close combat freezer to the machine and then we have so the start more. of your cars is right here that's in it. the freezer like a couple of rolls of fabric <laughs> it's quite strange when you think of it that way yeah absolutely okay on some of the uh, on the rs it's an option with a with a kind of roofs roof scoop a little bit similar to the uh, one to one but uh, it doesn't go up on the roof because the roof is now detachable and stowable in the uh, luggage compartment. So it's mm -hmm. a slightly different one, but when, when there is a roof scoop, 
you don't need uh, a rear glass. Okay. So uh, what we do is we use the rear glass as a tool to make a carbon fiber glass and replace it with for those cars. Okay, so save some weight. Yeah. Yeah, you, you only, you're, you're only looking into a scoop anyway, so... Yeah, you're not going to see through it. You don't really need glass. Yeah. I noticed immediately as we come through to here, you have a lot more parts than you have done in my previous visits. Right, right. So things are clearly going in the, uh, in the right direction. We've got some uh, wheels. Yes, yes. So, as you know, they're very light, very stiff. Something we're very proud of, very unique solution. Um, Held effortlessly. Yeah, it's not that heavy. <laughs> I can do some workout with it, but it's not really that handy. <laughs> awesome. And, and again, what's nice about it, it's, it's, it's just polished straight out of the tool. There's no after treatment, so there's no room for error when it comes to craftsmanship. You can't hide anything. It's just it's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all the different parts. Yeah. What sort of number of different carbon fiber components go into one of the cars? I'm a little bit lost count. I have to check again yeah. in our uh, business control system. Big number. But I guess it's 500 ish. Okay. Something like okay. that. Something like that. Yeah. But it's always amazing. I mean, seeing the very start of the cars where they go into it, well, the chassis gets. Yes. This is, uh, this is the bonding jig for the chassis. Let's see, this is, uh, yeah, this is a, a Gera chassis. The big difference between the Regier and the Agera chassis is the uh, central tunnel, mm -hmm. because we have our a battery pack in the central tunnel of the Regier that comes in from underneath the car into the tunnel. Uh, okay. So we, we uh, had to make space for that. <clears throat> and it's very nice to have it in the center of the car, also quite far forward, because you really want the mass as much as in the center as you can. That's why a mid-engine car usually handles well, mm -hmm. because the mass is very centralized. Yeah. Have the battery pack there, and being yeah. able to fit it there was something we really thought for and, and managed in a really uh, good way. And you can actually take the battery pack out and in in the car in like 20, 30 minutes. Okay. But from quite underneath yeah. with quick connects. Uh, but it meant, I mean, on, on the Agera, we used the center tunnel as, as the, the spine for the whole electrical system. And now we have a big battery pack in there. And mm. So we, had, we actually redid the whole electrical system for the Regera, where we re, uh, went away from a centralized uh, brain power uh, for the circuitry to a completely uh, distributed electrical system with processors all around the car. Right, which okay. can be upgraded over the air. Uh, so okay. it's very, very, very intelligent, a lot of computer power in the car. And it meant we could, it's, yeah, it's, it, it's a distributed uh, control system in the car, you can see. Okay. So e even things like wing mirrors have their own processors inside. Then we give, right. them, we give them power, a can line, and then we make them think the way we want. We don't, we don't send like power signals, it's all controlled within the wing mirror or the door lock or or the bonnets, or the lamps. Everything. Even, yeah. even a tail lamp has its own uh, Motorola Freescale processor in it, and we program it, and it does its job with just power and a can line. Okay. Which so is when, quite unique. When the uh, car moves on from here? Yeah, it's, so it goes up on, well, the, the monocoque, when it's uh, bonded and done on, on station one, it goes up here. We put the monocoque here, and then we pre-fit the bodywork over the uh, chassis to make sure everything aligns perfectly, all gaps are good. And many customers want custom striping and lines on the car. And the only way to get them perfect is to draw them up on a fitted body. Yes, if you try to, to do like a perfectly. sweeping line on a door and then on a bonnet separate, you will never make it perfect. It's just yeah. impossible. So this is the only station which is kind of a little bit counterintuitive in a sense because you, you put the car together looking almost like a car. <laughs> of course, there's no engine or suspension or it's just carbon. It bits. looks a bit like a car. It looks like a car and then you draw up your lines and then you tear it apart again. So you would <laughs> never do that on a, on a normal production oh. line, but that's, that's what you have to do to... Yeah, you have to take it back apart. Make them so. as bespoke as, we, as our customers are. Absolutely, and then, and then it comes into the paint shop. And we're, we're actually uh, going to... We're, the building next door, we're going to move uh, the paint shop over there to free up space for more carbon fiber work here. Okay. Because as you see, it's getting really, really Yeah, well, I can see lots of front bumpers and yeah, regiers, parts. Yeah, regiers, regiers, and exactly. But it's exciting. Yeah. So it's amazing to see the, uh, the change in growth. Um, right. You know, from my first visits to coming back and having a look now. Right. So here um, we have the polishing department. Here you can see the luster of the raw uh, wet sanded carbon. Mm -hmm. It gives that metallic sheen, which is 
I like a lot it's, actually. It's, I think it's quite cool. You can you can actually feel the fibers. If yeah. you if you draw your finger backwards and forwards, you feel the fibers. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they're a little bit colder than otherwise because there's nothing covering them. What you feel here is 98% carbon fiber. The epoxy is only in the indentions between the fibers. Mm -hmm. Okay. That saves a lot of weight, gives a unique look, but it takes a lot of energy to to get to that level of quality. And sort of finalizing the bodywork of a car, what sort of hours and work goes into it? So, uh, I haven't seen the latest hours now because things are changing quite a lot. But I guess we're going from 4,000 hours down to around 3,500 hours right now. Per That's car. a pretty serious investment of time. Yeah, it's a lot of time, for sure. So if you walk in here, we have our engine build. This is here. beautiful. Here we have a Regera engine. With and what a stunning, stunning, stunning engine this is. Yeah, it's quite uh, unique with the electrical electrification on the, on the front. And here we're having a little bit of fun. <laughs> Infinite power direction, yes, you know which way it turns. <laughs> I love that, all the small details inside. So, just sitting here is an extra 200 horsepower mm -hmm. and 400 newton meters of torque feeding straight into the crank. This acts as a starter motor, generator, alternator, if, if you wish, uh, torque, power fill, and battery charger all at the same time. Very multi-purpose. Yeah, <laughs> pretty handy. Fits well there. And then we have, of course, two more electrical motors at the rear as well. The early stages. Early stages, yes. And even here, um, I love this way. You'll you'll never see that. Well, if you open up the engine, you will see it. Well, hopefully. You. <laughs> and, and on one test car, we drove uh, for a couple of years, around seventy thousand kilometers. Yes. And then we just want to have a look inside the engine. It's driven really hard as a test car just to see what it looked like inside. First of all, all the tolerances, everything was fine. It looked like brand new. And this was all intact. You could still see the logo. Okay, awesome. So that was pretty cool. It's, it's actually laser etched into the ceramic uh, coating on top. So this uh, uh, goldish color has this white ceramic straight underneath. You put your finger in here and feel how smooth that is. Whoa! <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it, you, you can ask yourself, why is it not like polished to a shine? But this is the right structure uh, to have the best uh, aerodynamic re release. It becomes like small balls of air rolling on these small, okay. let's say, uh, ripples. And, and that's the lowest friction you can have. Actually, a dirty car is faster than a polished car due to the same reason. Okay. Because if it's really polished and clean, the air sticks to the surface, so you want it to roll on the surface. Same yeah. principle in here. Look at the engine dyno. All quick connects. We can, when the engine is uh, built and finished, we can have it up and running with the, in about two hours. Oh, really? So if you look there, you have like uh, dyno exhaust sets with sensors on them ready to be bolted onto the engine. And dyno dry sump tank system that hangs off of the roof on a swing arm and things like that to make it simple to get it up and running quickly. So you can have a, a good look at our more traditional rear end um, where we have a seven speed transmission. Extremely durable, uh, extremely good for high torque. Lasts forever, they also don't break, which is a nice thing. Um, and we can also see the quite bespoke shock absorber system here. So the, the basic structure is from Orleans in Sweden with our custom valving inside that we developed ourselves to get the characteristic we wanted for the car. With our own hydraulic lifting system with position sensor that we have front and rear. Mm -hmm. And with our active bump and rebound dampening system so we can change the behavior of the car. Not only ride height, not only aerodynamics, but also stiffness and bump and rebound of the shock absorbs actively. And that's all connected to the possibility of having this uh, um, pre-active setup where the car through GPS knows where it's on the track, it yes. knows what's ahead. So we can reset the ride height, the stiffness, the bump, the rebound, the aerodynamics, even things like turbo boost if we know 
you really don't need more power in this corner. We don't need <laughs> the full boost, for example. Okay, very very clever stuff there. It's uh, it sounds more complicated than it is. It's like, <laughs> I'm sure it's not simple. Well, you drive around the racetrack, and then you have your GPS positions, and then you notice here we would let do a reset. We tag that. Yeah. We send in new parameters. The car resets itself ahead of time and where it's safe, and then it's adapted for that position. Okay. So it's not that complicated, <laughs> actually. But it, it, it brings another dimension to what you can do, basically. Front end of the, of, of the car, this is an Agera. Massive, massive cooler. Yeah. I mean, we have the most horsepower to cool off of any production car in the world. Mm -hmm. And many of them are driven in Dubai, Saudi Arabia, and so on in summertime. So there's no compromise on cooling. No, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it also helps out as it's lying down the water radiator it's also helping out as a crash member and okay. uh, by itself there is no other cooler series no like air conditioning or oil cooling or anything it's just sitting there in solitude getting all the fresh air for itself right which is important you can see here are the active flaps for the rs similar on the one-to-one -one. so this flap here can actually move down Right. Um, it's kind of interesting. It's if you if you do not consider the actuator, the flap weighs less than if it didn't exist. Okay. Let's say that the <laughs> bumper structure weighs less with the flaps than without the flaps. Right. Because they are just a cutout into the bumper, and we're bending the carbon of the bumper. So the flap yeah. is the air you see between the two carbon fiber pieces. Yes. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's nice. kind of uh, getting a function by removing stuff. Yeah, double double win. Yeah. This is the uh, existing prototype room for the Riera. It's kind of uh, a little bit cramped, so it would be better with a new one. This will be converted into our engine, sorry, chassis dyno room, uh, which we used to have in the other part of the building, but we needed to take that space for composite work. Yeah. So now we're moving it to a more correct part of the building which is here and then we will move this regear and the other ones into the bigger prototype room and um, yeah as you can see this one has winter tires I was it. just about to say that's an interesting thing to, uh, to note noticeably narrower than the uh, standard fit summer tires right right definitely uh, it's actually uh, our winter tire setup for all cars are actually okay. front uh, rims much mm -hmm. narrower you don't really want wide winter no, not tires on, not on snow. so for for safety drivability practicality and cost it makes more sense to have a narrower tire so we we put the 19 inch on the rear and then we put a higher profile to get mm -hmm. the correct circumference yeah and then you have a really good uh, winter tire setup yeah and, and it's incredible on snow it's like a rally car <laughs> really it's in, anyone can drive it easily and you, you can look like uh, like a professional rally driver very easily. You can just slide it sideways with ease. I can imagine that's quite good fun. It's a lot of fun, yeah. I like this, uh, your logo inside the right, rear lamp right. there. Exactly, so it's, yeah, it's a little bit dirty and salty here because, yeah. We're well, you're test driving this car in the winter. Yeah, we are. And it's uh, negative degrees outside, it's rather cold. Right, but yes, we're going to this be taking... morning was very icy. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we, we experienced that on the way up, but we're going to be taking a proper look at this car tomorrow. Yeah, which I'm great. Rather looking forward to. Yes, uh, and uh, yeah, it has this, uh, this uh, robotized body system. As far as we are aware, it's the world's first fully robotized bodywork. On a performance car, of course, that's in a way an unnecessary thing that adds weight. But the system we created, as we anyway had hydraulic pressure in the car for a lot of different mm -hmm. reasons, like the wing and lifting system, we just yep. utilized that hydraulic pressure through very thin, lightweight hydraulic lines and replaced basically gas struts with a thin, if you look at the rear, you can see how it looks like a gas strut, but it's hydraulics. So you see there, it says Koenigsegg there, that rod there, it looks like a traditional gas yep. strut, but it's not, it's an hydraulic strut with okay. a position sensor in it. Yep. So they weigh the same as the gas struts, pretty much, with just a thin electrical cable and a thin hydraulic hose. You can see them how thin the hydraulic hoses are sitting off, off of that tube there. Yes, okay, yeah, I can see that. So the, the weight penalty is under five kilos in the whole car for fully robotization with wow. self-closing locks. under five kilos. And we felt it's worth that. 
Yes. Even on a sports car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, beautiful one. Well. To get that practicality out of it, in effect. On the, on the production cars, there is a, uh, like a parking sensor on the wing mirror, mm -hmm. and we have a robotized wing mirror as well. So when the door swings up, first the wing mirror looks forward, so okay. it sees if anything is in the way, mm -hmm. and then as the door swings up, it twists back, and then it, you can see what's going on here through the parking sensor to make sure you don't hit ah, anything. Okay. Then there's another parking sensor type sensor down here, so as it swings forward, it also can detect if there's any obstacle in the way. So right, it okay. Stops. So yeah. you can always open the door safely, it, will, it won't hit anything. Okay, so from the inside you can open the door. Yeah, you and, push a button and it goes And you don't need to have somebody sighting to make sure exactly. you don't hit. It, it knows. And Which we also is... even have, we have cameras on each wing mirror. Yeah. So the wing mirrors are really advanced. They, as yes. I said, they have, they, have a, they have their own processors inside. So you have, you have a, you have a uh, camera, uh, which we will program together with the front camera, the rear uh, camera, to have this helicopter view of the car when you're parking. Okay, yeah. So uh, we're about to start. You, you that see that on sort of SUVs and the like, right, but you don't see right. that on very low. Uh... Right, right. That's well, very exciting. So we're doing all those uh, software systems ourselves. So it's quite, quite time consuming and it will, it will be an over the air update as the customers have received the cards, but the hardware system is there. Well, that's absolutely fantastic. So I think. We'll save a little bit more to look at this next time, but thank you ever so much for that look around. It's been absolutely brilliant to see, well, just to see how everything's changing and growing and moving forward with Regira RS and with the introduction of Regira. So. We're having fun. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Having fun and providing the world with a lot of fun as well while you do it. We have so. some very lucky customers with some incredible cars. So. Right. Thank you ever so much for showing well, me around. thank you. Good to have you. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that look. We'll be shooting another video with this car, so make sure you're subscribed and take a look at that. Uh, yeah, let's wrap that up for now. Thank you very much and catch you soon. Cheers! With the quest to find which is the most exciting to take out and With drive. These five things I love about my Ferrari FF. First driving the Koenigsegg Agera R. And not only am I driving an Agera R.